The pandemic strikes again, this time impacting Dane's public commute. The Greater Dane Regional Transit Authority is facing a driver shortage and struggling to find people to fill the openings. Dane 24 7 hours Alex King is live at the Greater Dane RTA with more. Alex. Yeah, good morning. The RTA plans to make some temporary changes to some of its services, and this comes after a lack of bus operators, also because of decreased customer demand due to COVID. The RTA is hosting a higher on the spot event on August 26th and a public hearing this Thursday to discuss changes. Before making these changes, communications manager Jessica Olson says staff want to receive your input into the planning process. She says RTA hopes to provide alternative alternative options for people being impacted. We want to hear how these proposed temporary changes could impact them, how we can make the, the lesser impact on as many people as possible. We know that less people ride this service in general during these times and these routes that we're proposing eliminating temporarily. So we are trying to have the least impact possible. We do know that it will impact some people though, and we would like to talk to them about those impacts. The agency is proposing the following temporary changes. Temporary service hour adjustments, so fixed route and paratransit service hours Monday through Saturday from 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. and fixed route and paratransit service hours Sunday from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. and then temporary route eliminations, which includes route 64, 65 and 66 and then temporary service adjustments, which includes route 14. All bus route service will run every 90 minutes. Now the public hearing takes place tomorrow at 10 a.m. at the Dayton Metro Library. Stick with us because we're going to be talking more about how this shortage can impact you and the community. Reporting live downtown, Alex King, Dayton 24 7 Now News. First tonight, COVID-19 changes in Dayton. The city updating its protocols today, now requiring all city employees to get vaccinated or agree to weekly testing before September 20th. Good evening, everyone. I'm Adam Arrow. Megan is off tonight. In a Dayton 24-7 Now exclusive, Allison Walker reports the Ohio legislature is also considering a bill that would make this illegal. Allison. Adam, lawyers say even if the city required all staff to be vaccinated without providing the testing alternative, it would still be legal. Yet some lawmakers say it's unethical, as many across the state are being fired for not feeling comfortable with the fast track vaccine. Safe work environments where our employees can do their work without threat of um, harm and they can go home to their families. Dayton City Manager Shelley Dickstein citing the growing threat of the Delta variant for the decision. City employees who cannot get the COVID-19 vaccination for medical or religious purposes will be required weekly testing. But are you asking them to prove religious affiliation in any way, shape or form? We, we will be uh, uh, exempting uh, with regards to medical and religious Human resources and the law department will work through those processes. Dickstein adds employees who do not agree will be removed from the workplace or put on administrative leave. UD law professor Thaddeus Hoffmeister says the city's move is legal. Your religious belief is not going to override the need to protect people's health and welfare. So it's fine. You can have that belief, but they're not going to be able to accommodate that belief in a restaurant, so you'd be terminated, yes. But lawmakers are racing to challenge this with the Vaccine Choice and Anti-Discrimination Act. The bill sponsor, Representative Jennifer Gross, says she is a certified nurse practitioner and tells me the legislation will prevent mass stabbing shortages, as many medical professionals don't feel comfortable with the experiential shot just yet. We're getting inundated by, I'm going to lose my job, and also provides, provides civil penalties against a business who is discriminating against a person who does not want the vaccines. And Hoffmeister says employer COVID-19 vaccine requirements have already been challenged and upheld in courts of law across the nation. Reporting live in Dayton, Allison Walker, Dayton 24, 7 Now News. A rising senior at Centerville High School getting recognition from the Ohio Department of Health tonight for his work in fighting vaccine and COVID-19 misinformation. In a Dayton 24-7 Now exclusive tonight, Bennett Wise shows us the effect he's had on one community and his hope moving forward. When you inject mRNA inside the cell... 17-year-old Josh Agarwal didn't spend his summer playing video games or working, but instead volunteering at COVID-19 vaccine clinics in Dayton Children's Hospital. The son of two doctors, Josh saw the effects of the pandemic firsthand. 
being separated from his extended family in India. You know, I had family members get hospitalized. They're in, you know, uh, in the ICU for weeks. Uh, there were shortages of beds and they all wanted to get vaccinated. He signed up to volunteer for his first clinic in late May and experienced high volume. But through June, he saw fewer shots in arms. And that's when he ramped up his efforts. I made brochures, just for, you know, information brochures, and I started distributing them. And then, you know, I started like contacting organizations, uh, churches, and it was very difficult because this is, this has become, become a very political issue. He contacted more than 50 businesses, organizations, and churches about giving a presentation on the COVID-19 vaccine. All declined or didn't respond, except for one. When I first got the call, I said to myself, uh, what can he say? <laughs> what, he, what, can, what can he say that I haven't already said? He a young, he a young individual. Bishop Bennett says he's been preaching COVID-19 safety and the importance of vaccination throughout the pandemic with only mild success and realized having a different perspective come in might change minds. And it worked. Some people in his congregation got vaccinated the same week. Every church, every pastor should consider allowing him to come. Every business should consider allowing him to come if he presents it to them. I guarantee there'd be some people that walk away and will go get vaccinated. We have the opportunity to get vaccinated. We have the choice. That's a choice that so many countries don't have and so many people wish they did have. You know?